Hello, good day, viewers. Today we will be talking about Laplace transform. Uh, basically, Laplace transform transform a function into an entirely different function. So, this is how it is donated. Laplace transform of a function, say f of t, it transforms this function into an entirely different function, say f of s. And this f of s can be of 10. So here we have a function of t, but it transforms it into another function which is entirely different from this function. And to obtain this function, we have to take the integral from zero to infinity of exponential negative st times the function with respect to t. So in this tutorial, we are going to derive five fundamental equations that will help us in solving subsequent problems. So the first one, let f of t equals to exponential lambda t, where lambda is any constant. So therefore we have the Laplace transform of exponential lambda t, which is equal to, we are going to now substitute this information into our integration. The integral from zero to infinity, exponential negative st times the function f of t, which is now exponential lambda t with respect to t. Uh, this is equal to, because we have common base, we can add the index together. The integral from zero to infinity of exponential negative s minus lambda t with respect to t. Now what we are going to do, we are going to integrate this function and substitute our lower and upper bounds. If we integrate this function, we are going to get uh, one divided by the derivative of the index with respect to t, which is now going to be negative s minus lambda, negative s minus lambda, times exponential negative s minus lambda t. And we are going to substitute our lower and upper bound. This is equal to negative one over s minus lambda times so if t is infinity, the whole of this term multiplied by infinity is going to be infinity. So we have exponential negative infinity minus the lower bound, which is now if t equal to zero, the whole of this will be zero, exponential zero. Here we have exponential negative infinity, which is the same thing as one divided by exponential infinity. So we are going to apply the aspect of limit in this uh, substitution because we don't know any number called infinity, but we know that it is a very large number. So if we apply the aspect of limit in this expression, uh, this will tends to move closer and closer to zero. Therefore, we have a zero here, and e to the zero is just one, so we have minus one. So we are going to expand this with this. This time zero is just zero, but this time this will just change this negative sign and we will have one over S minus lambda. This is just one divided by S minus lambda for S minus lambda greater than zero. So this is our first formula. Now to obtain the second one, since lambda is constant, let lambda equals to zero. If lambda equals to zero, zero times t will make it zero, and exponential zero is one. So we have Laplace transform of one, which is going to be equal to, since this is zero, we are going to only have one over s, for s greater than zero. So now we have of 10, two equations, one and two. Now let's find the third one. Suppose f of t equals to t to the power of n. Uh, the Laplace transform of t to the power of n will now be equal to the integral from zero to infinity of exponential negative st times t to the power of n with respect to t. 
These two functions are different, therefore we are going to apply integration by fat here. So let, let u equals to t to the power of n. Uh, if we take the derivative of u with respect to t, we are going to obtain du equals to n t to the power of n minus 1 dt. dv is equal to exponential negative st dt. To find v, we are going to integrate both sides, and v will now be equal to uh, 1 divided by the derivative of this index, which is just negative s, times exponential negative st. So now this integral will be equal to uv, and you know that u is t to the power of n, and v is equal to this. So we can say uh, negative 1 over s, uh, exponential negative st times t to the power of n, our limit from 0 to infinity, then minus the integral of v du, our v is this and du is this, and we have constant n and 1 over negative s, which we can factor out, and this negative will change this to positive, and we have n over s, Then inside we have exponential negative st times t to the power of n minus 1 dt from 0 to infinity. All right, so if we substitute this limit, uh, we can see that uh, as, as t approaches infinity here, the whole of this will be zero because this is zero times this will make it zero. And if t is also zero, you see t zero to the power of n is zero times the whole of this is zero. Therefore, the whole of this is equal to zero. We are only left with this. So now let us continue. Therefore, we can say uh, the Laplace transform of t to the power of n is just equal to n over s the integral from zero to infinity uh, of exponential negative st, t to the power of n minus one dt. But if you look at this function, it's just the same thing as Laplace transform of t to the power of n minus one. Therefore, we say this is equal to n over s, the Laplace transform of t to the power of n minus one. There is something logical here. When we take the Laplace transform of t to the power of n, we got n, this n over s, times the Laplace transform of t to the power of n minus one. Therefore, if we take the Laplace transform of this again, we are going to get n minus one over s times the Laplace transform of n minus two. So we say Laplace transform of t to the power of n will now be equal to n over s times n minus one over s again, times the Laplace uh, transform of t to the power of n minus two. If we take again the Laplace transform of this, we are going to get n minus two over s times the Laplace transform of t to the power of n minus three. You can see that this is just reducing by one by one, which defines n factorial. So this is n factorial all over s times s times s up to s to the power of n. Because the last number is going to be n, which is n minus n is zero, and t to the power of zero is just one, times the Laplace transform of one. But previously we have seen that the Laplace transform of one is just one over s. So we say this is equal to n factorial all over s to the power of n times one over s. This is equal to n factorial, n factorial times one. Then s to the power of n times s is just s to the power of n plus one.
we can see that clearly the Laplace transform of t to the power of n is just equal to n factorial divided by s to the power of n plus 1 for s greater than 0. So now we have obtained the third equation. Now let us look on to the fourth equation. Now suppose f of t equals uh, sine lambda t for any constant lambda. The Laplace transform of this function is sine lambda t will now be equal to, because now we want to transform this into a function of s, we're going to apply this principle, 0 to infinity of exponential negative st times the function which is sine lambda t with respect to t. Here we have to apply integration by parts, so let u equals to sine alpha t. If we differentiate u with respect to t, du equals to lambda cos lambda t. dv, which is now going to be exponential negative st dt. If we integrate this, we are going to get v. And here, negative 1 over s, because we have to take 1 over the derivative of this index, times exponential negative st. OK, now we are going to substitute. The first term is uv, u and v, which is negative 1 over s, exponential negative st, sine lambda t from 0 to infinity minus the integral from 0 to infinity of v du. We have v and we have du here. But they have a constant which is lambda and here we have negative 1 over s. So we are going to multiply them together which is going to be negative lambda over s. If we multiply this negative with that negative, we are going to get positive. So let us factor out uh, lambda over s, then the integral from 0 to infinity of what is left exponential negative st, then cos lambda t. Exponential negative st cos lambda t dt. Let us substitute our upper and the lower bound. If we um, set t, to be a number closer to infinity, we are going to get a negative infinity here. And that number very close to infinity, if we take this exponential rest of the power of that number, we are going to get zero here. So zero times the whole of this will make it zero. And if we substitute t for zero, we are going to get sine zero. And sine zero, you know, is zero. Time this will make it zero. Therefore, the whole of this will be zero. We only have this left. So we say the Laplace transform of sine uh, lambda t will now be equal to lambda over s, the integral from 0 to infinity of exponential negative st cos lambda t dt. So this is what we have. We want to now integrate this function again. Let's set cos lambda t to be our u. Let u equals to cos lambda t. du will now be equal to negative lambda sine lambda t. Then we set exponential negative st dt as our dv. dv will now be equal to um, exponential negative st dt. To integrate this, we get v. And to the right hand side, we have negative 1 over s, exponential negative st. So we are going to substitute this back into that one. Therefore, the Laplace transform of sine lambda t will now be equal to this lambda over s times uv. This is u and this is v. 
we have negative 1 over s, exponential negative st, cos lambda t. This is the first term. The minus the integral of v du. The integral of v du from 0 to infinity. Our v is this and du is this. Both of them have negative. If we multiply them, we get positive. So we have constant lambda and 1 over s, which we want to factor out. Lambda over s. And inside, we are going to have exponential negative st, then sine lambda t dt. This is what we have. But if you look at this, it's just uh, the Laplace transform of sine lambda t. So what we are going to do, we are going to take the limit of this from here to here, since we have not finished integrating this. But since we are done with this, we can substitute the lower and upper bound here. So now let us move on. So the Laplace transform of sine lambda t will now be equal to, uh, if we set, if we set, um, if we set t to be a number closer to infinity, this will become zero times this will become zero. So we have lambda over s minus. If we set um, t to be equal to zero, we have cos zero and cos zero is one. So we have one here. If we set t to be equal to zero, we are going to have exponential zero, which is one again, times this one is one. Times this, we are only going to have negative one over s, which will make it positive one over s. Then minus lambda over s, times the Laplace transform of sine lambda t. This will be equal to the Laplace transform of sine lambda t equals to this time this will make it zero. This time this will make it lambda over s squared minus this time this will make it lambda squared over s squared, Laplace transform of sine lambda t. Now since we have common terms, we can bring this one backward so that we have Laplace transform of sine lambda t plus lambda squared over s squared, Laplace transform of sine lambda t, which is now going to be lambda over s squared. We can factor out the Laplace transform of sine lambda t. Laplace transform of sine lambda t times, here we have only one, plus lambda squared over s squared equals to lambda over s squared. Therefore, the Laplace transform of sine lambda t will be equal to lambda over s squared divided by 1 plus lambda squared over s squared. This is going to be equal to this lambda divided by s squared times 1 is s squared. s squared times lambda squared over s squared is just lambda squared. So therefore, the Laplace transform of sine lambda t is just lambda divided by s squared plus lambda squared. Therefore, the Laplace transform of sine lambda t is going to be lambda divided by s squared plus lambda squared for s greater than lambda. Now let us look onto the last one, which I will not solve, but I will just write the solution. The Laplace transform of uh, cos lambda t is now going to be equal to s over s squared plus lambda squared for 
uh, s greater than lambda. So you can use the same principle of uh, integration to find out for the Laplace transform of course lambda, but all the steps remain the same. Finally, we have derived five equations which we are going to be using in our subsequent examples. So in my next class, we are going to be looking at how to find the Laplace transform of some functions. Thank you for watching. Do share to your learning colleagues and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more exciting videos.